let's learn how to make this dodge the enemies game on microbit i am here on makecode.microbit.org and i have started a new project dodge the enemy so the first thing let's learn is how to make our player sprite and to make our player sprite i'm going to go into variables and i'm going to create a new variable and i'm going to call it player you can call it whatever you like but it makes sense to call your variable something that you can recognize them with so we have this player and i'm saying when microbit will start set the variable called player on a certain position and what we want is that our player should be a sprite which is in the middle of the bottom row of our microbit so the led grid on the microbit which is 25 leds are positioned like this we have the x axis here and the y axis here but usually x0 y0 would be this led but it is inverse in the microbit this top left led is x0 y0 like you can see here so you have the x axis here the y axis here and the x axis is incrementing 0 1 2 3 4 4 like this and y is incrementing 0 1 2 3 4 like this which would normally be negative but on the micro bit this is how they are addressed so the corner left led is x0 y0 and then the next one will be x1 y0 x2 y0 and so forth and down will be x0 y1 x0 y2 and so forth and the led on the bottom right corner will be x4 y4 so we want to spawn the player which right here in the middle of the bottom most row so the middle of the bottom most row is x2 y4 those are the coordinates so when we are saying set a player we want to create the player sprite at x2 y4 to do this we i'll go into games and in this i'll get this programming block called create sprite at so what we are saying is create a variable called player and then this player is basically the sprite which we are creating at x2 and if i look at it right now the default is x2 y2 and hence the led player led has spawned at the middle but we want x2 y4 so if i change this my player led is now spawning at the correct location next let's learn how to move this player sprite left and right by pressing the a and b keys so for this i'm going to go into input and i'm going to get on button a press command here and then i'm going to go back into game get a command that move sprite and i don't want sprite because sprite is another variable which we haven't created and that's why we are getting this error message so on the drop down here i'm going to say the variable called player so when a button a is pressed move this variable or this this sprite which is created here move it left so whenever we press a we want it to move left so i'm saying move it move the player by minus 1 so now we can test this when i press a my player sprite is moving 1 to the left and then if i right click and duplicate this command then i'm saying that on button b pressed move this sprite by plus 1 so now when i press b i my player sprite goes to the right and when i press a my sprite goes to the left so now we can control our player sprite next we will spawn the enemy on the top row and what we want is that on the top row the enemy sprite should appear at a random location between x0 and x4 and randomly it should appear on this row so again to make the enemy i'll go back to variables and i'm going to create a new variable and i'm going to call it enemy 1 and i'm going to say set enemy 1 and i'm putting this in the forever loop because unlike the player which is just on this row we want the enemy to continuously spawn and come down so that's why i'm putting this under the forever loop and i'm going i'm saying that set the enemy one and again i'm going to go into games 
and get this create sprite command and now where do we want the enemy we want the enemy to be anywhere on this row so this is x0 x1 x2 x3 uh, and x4 but y is always 0 so i'm going to say let it let y be 0 and x can be anywhere between 0 to 4 so i'm going to go into math and i'm going to get pick random number command and i'm saying this number can be anything between 0 and 4 and i'm going to put this as the value of x so with this command we are creating a variable enemy1 and in the variable we are storing the location of a new sprite that we have created at x uh, which can be between 0 and 4 and y which is 0. All the enemy sprites have spawned one by one it happened really fast and hence we have these LEDs that are lit up and in fact continuously new LEDs are being lit up here but of, because all of them have already got lit up we are not able to see it. So next what we want to do is we want to bring them down. So what we want is they have all spawned here and now we want to change the value of y step by step. So value of y is zero in, in this for this top row. So we want uh, these uh, LEDs to come down. So we want y to be zero, then y to be one, then y to be two, y to be three, and then y to be four. So to do that, I'm going, I'm going into loops and I'm saying, repeat four times because we want whatever is changing we want that position to change four times and I'm saying change the position of y so for this I'm going back into game and I'm saying set and I don't want sprite I, I'm instead I'm saying the variable called enemy1 whose value was initially zero we want that to be changed by one so I'm saying four times increase this variable by one. So now all my, uh, you know, all the enemy sprites spawned and very quickly they have gone down. In fact, you can see some random, you know, LEDs glowing because they are still spawning and they're still coming down. But they are happening so fast that we can't see it. So to slow it down, let's go into basic and let's get a pause out. And I'm going to add a pause here. And I'm saying it's like a hundred millisecond pause. So now we have our enemy sprite spawning at random locations on the top row and coming down. Now how fast they come down is how challenging the game is. So if, if this is too fast, you can change this pause. So I'm going to make it, let's say 200 milliseconds. And then this is how my enemy is coming down. So the enemy is coming down. But what, what is happening right now is that when they reach the last row, they are not disappearing. And because of this, we will not be able to figure out where our player is even if I do A and B. So we want that when the enemy comes to the last row, it should disappear. So for this, I'm going back into game and I'm saying, I'm getting this command called delete sprite. So I'm saying, after four times the loop is repeated, outside this loop, I'm saying, delete this enemy one. So let's see the result. So now we have the enemy spawning and coming down. We can control the speed by controlling this pause and our player is able to move left and right to dodge the uh, enemy. So the final thing we want to do is that if the enemy collides with the player, we want to detect that collision. So to do that, I'm going to go into basic. I'm getting another forever loop because forever we want the game to check the condition that if the enemy is touching the player then whatever is the losing condition should happen so for this i'm going back into game and from here i'm going to get this command called is sprite and i'm saying here is the player is the player touching and i want the enemy sprite here so I'm going to go back into variables and I'm going to get the enemy variable. So we are saying forever check that is the player touching the enemy. And if it is true, if this condition is true, then we will have the losing condition. So to check this condition, I'm going to go into logic and I'm going to get a if then statement. And I'm putting this here that if forever check that if the player is touching the enemy, then do something. 
so right now let's make the first game very simple so let's just say that if this happens game ends so i'm going to get the game over command and in later videos we can make it more complex by you know adding lives and scores and things like that but right now let's just make a simple game so uh, let's test our game so our enemy is coming down and we can dodge the enemy and if there is a collision then the game should be so as you can see the player is touching the enemy but the game is not detecting a collision so i think what we need to do is we just need to add a little bit more weight when the enemy is fully down so that the collision can be detected let's see if this works so now the collision is being detected so what was happening earlier was that the enemy when it was coming to the last row was simply getting deleted before the collision was happening so you can change this weight if you want you can make it even smaller i think even a 50 millisecond weight should work so let's test this yeah our game is working perfectly fine now so when when the losing condition is happening it's game over i can restart the game i can dodge the enemy by going left and right and how fast these enemies drop you can control by controlling the pause and if a collision happens then the game is over and if this game is looking simple to you we can have more than one enemy so having more than one enemy keeping a score in the game how many enemies are dodged and making the game more engaging by having music etc is something we will look in the next part of this video